learn how easy it is to create your very own popular time warp effect. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our time warp effect. And really, there's just going to be essentially one single value we need to change uh, for it to start working. But before we can get to that part, uh, we do need to set up a mask to determine where our time warp is occurring. And that's actually going to be the most time consuming part, um, but it's actually not that hard to do. So let's start by adding a render target. I'm going to call this mask. And I also want to add, I'm um, going to just use some screen images. Uh, we can use whatever we want for a mask. And so I'm going to take the camera, rename it to mask. Maybe I'll call it mask cam. And I want its render target to be mask. So our screen image should disappear. Uh, because this is the render target, um, we moved our stuff to the new one. So while I'm working on this, I'm just going to change my live target to mask. And I also want to make sure it's rendered before the render target. So I'm going to click those three little dots, drag it up. Um, so just so I can see what's going on, my live target is now the mask render target. And then um, I just want to make sure it's rendered before the render target because we need to use this mask um, as part of the effect. All right, so let's get back to business. If I select the camera, I'm also going to create a new layer. I just like to keep everything nice and separate and organized. So we have our mask layer. For our mask camera, go into our mask render target. And I just need to select the screen image and set it to mask. Now for our mask, uh, we just want something black or white. So black and the mask is going to hide something, white will show it. And then anything gray in between will kind of um, mix between the two proportionally. So I'm just going to uh, use just plain white and plain black images uh, to start. So I'll call this the white layer. And I just have a couple just white and black images I'm going to import. So it's really just completely black square, completely a white square. Uh, so nothing fancy, change it to white, stretch, I'm going to duplicate this. This will be my black portion of the mask. And now I can move this around to create a sliding effect, for example. So let's go ahead and do that really quick. So I'm going to add a helper script tween manager so we can just slide our mask back and forth so that just needs a minute to create this all right we don't want the examples all right so i'm going to delete that and then move the tween manager up to the top now on my black portion of the mask i'm going to add a script and I want to find inside tween, tween types. I want tween screen transform. And let's start at 20 in the Y direction and go to zero. And let's ping pong back and forth. Actually, we want to start with all white. We'll see why in a minute and then go to black. All right, so I'm just going to change a few values. You can use whatever you want. So just a nice smooth linear motion for five seconds. So we're going to show and hide everything. Okay, so this is our mask. We're all done. So let's change our live target back to our rendered target. And now let's create our time warp. So I'm just going to add a screen image. And if I have nothing selected here, I'll get a new orthographic camera back. That's perfect. Let's rename this output. And now I want a an unlit material uh, because I want to be able to add a mask. I don't want to have to add lights and worry about lighting. So I'm going to swap out for this unlit material. I want the blend modes to be normal. If I select my material, I also want to turn on opacity texture. And then you can also, as a side note, change the blend mode here. We just want to make sure it's normal. 
a texture, device camera texture. And for the opacity texture, I'm gonna choose that mask. Now, there should be nothing going on, and that's okay, uh, because after every frame, um, when Studio, and then when it's on your device, Snapchat is refreshing what is output to the render target. So if we select a camera, you can see we have this clear color option. So if we select, let's take an orthographic camera, our clear color option, this is kind of what comes into the uh, camera. So we could have like a texture come in. Now we have this input. Let's choose our mask. Now our mask is actually coming in to the camera. Now you can see that we have something going on here. Um, it's a little weird. It's not the effect we want. If we select background, it's just essentially the device camera texture. Uh, but if we put none, um, we still have an image here. And that's because the render targets themselves also have a clear color. So when each frame resets, we take our background, which is the device camera texture, and then everything over here, we start drawing that on top of things. And that's usually what you want, but we can also change that. Now, if we change the clear color on the render target to none, then what it's going to do is it's going to grab whatever was in frame and just use that as a clear color. So you can kind of see things starting to freeze and come back, uh, but it's a little hard to see. So I'm going to change the preview. Uh, so if you don't see any movement, you might have the photo preview activated. I'll just switch that to video. I'm going to come down. Let's grab the dance guy. All right. So we can see him dancing. Now, as our twin comes back down, uh, you can see that he freezes and it's that time warp effect. As we go back up, he starts moving again. And as it comes down, we get our effect. So I'm going to just add quickly um, another little render target in layer so we can see the mask at the same time. Uh, so this isn't needed for the effect. This is just to kind of see what's going on. So I need a new camera as well. So let's just call this overlay render target to the final. So with the graphic and this one, I want to do the render target coming in. Let's see here, screen image, going to show the mask. Let's put you on the right layer and let's bring you in and let's scale that mask down. Okay. So this all, this is just so we can see the mask on top of our effect. So you can see where we have white, we have full motion and wherever the black portion of the mask is, we're freezing the motion. That is because on this output image, we are showing the device camera texture, but we're masking it with that mask we created. So that means is everywhere that's white, we're showing our device camera texture. But as the black portion of the mask slides down, we stop showing the device camera texture. And then what happens is our render target with our clear color sets none takes over. So it's going to grab whatever is on the screen and use that for the next frame. And since in the black portion, we aren't showing the updated device camera texture, we're going to get the old data. And that's how you get this um, effect. So we can come into our mask and let's turn off this tween for just a minute. Uh, so if we start with it here, there's nothing to see because we're masking out our device camera texture, but we can slide it over. We have full motion. Now if we slide this over manually, you can see we're getting our freeze frame effect here. And then since I didn't go all the way over, we still have full motion here. Uh, so those are the basic mechanics of um, that time warp effect. Now I'm not gonna go out and finish the whole lens. I don't wanna completely copy it, um, 
But really all it is, is once you have a mask, all you have to do is just on the render target, change the clear color to none. And then make sure you have your mask uh, moving uh, to determine what is shown and what is frozen. Now there are um, a few other cool things we can do with this. So if we take our um, black portion of the mask and we change the alpha, we can get kind of this motion blur. So if we go really low, that means we're uh, mostly showing the white part of the mask. So we're mostly going to have the uh, device camera texture. But if we increase that alpha, we're going to start showing, um, we're going to start reusing some of this frame uh, for the next for the next frame, and so we get this kind of motion blur effect. Now there's a similar tutorial um, called Tracers by Ben uh, Knutson. He's another lens creator. Uh, he creates this effect using two separate render targets, um, but this is just another way to do it. Uh, but you have a little control over how much of the effect you get by adjusting this alpha. So if we go really high, uh, you can see that it takes a lot longer for the person to show up because you're grabbing less and less of the previous frame. If you go a little lower, then you kind of just have the ghosting motion blur where there's lots of motion going on. So that's another cool effect. Um, and then just for kicks and giggles, now we can actually bring in any arbitrary kind of video or texture. Uh, so this one is way too big to upload the lens, but uh, just to kind of see what's going on. So I'm just going to swap this white texture out for that video. And so you can see we have this star field video I just found on Pixabay. Um, and you can see with this acting as, as our mask, we get this kind of like cool, weird looking effect. Uh, so you don't need to just use the white and black sliding around for the time warp. Um, you can bring in any texture you want for the mask and you can get some pretty crazy effects. So you can find some texture or you can create your own. Uh, Snapchat has their own kind of version of the time warp with the circle that shrinks. Um, and so you could create something like that yourself. You could use a square or triangle. You could copy them and use a circle. Uh, but since we have our mask camera set up to a separate render target, you can really add anything you want in here and the effect will just work. And then you can use behavior scripts or tweens or custom script to control when it's triggered or um, whatnot. But that is the bulk of this effect. Um, all we need is just a mask to control how much of our device camera texture we see. And then render target, clear color, set to none, and you're good to go.